Um, I feel I didn't quite, wasn't, or you didn't understand, or I wasn't able to, to help you understand what I was talking about yesterday with the archetype. And why I was talking about this in relationship to the teenager. You know, we spoke about the birth of the life, of the life body through the life processes. And we spoke about releasing the life processes so that more and more as the organic body is formed, the soul body can be formed. Soul. And so this is the taming of soul force. Here I'm talking about archetypes. And I would have to say, so this is with the birth of the ego, yeah? And we would have to say, if I can use this word cognizing, knowing, yeah? Now think about this. The very young child, very young child, so this is 0 to 7, this is 14, no, 7 14, and this is 14 to 21. Now think about the, the child's consciousness here. The child is living in the, the people, especially the parents, the family, the child is living outside and slowly this outside becomes an inner capability, life capability. Only beginning here in the later phase of early childhood to ask questions and with complete confidence the child is told that is a dog, and the child says, dog, that is a dog, no question. And then more questions will come, where's the dog's papa? Does the dog have a papa? Where, where does the dog go when he dies? Now, the dog, many children have dogs that die. And they ask this question, and they receive in complete confidence from whatever the parents tell them. So the little child feels the truth is in my parents. They are good. And what they tell me is true and good. And then, what is the consciousness like here? Now the child, especially in the middle, begins to have their own soul experience. They also have many questions. And initially they believe their teachers. Their teachers tell them they believe these things. Even here, they'll talk, my friend told me that, and his mother and his father told him that, and I heard that. They will talk about reality as if it comes from human beings. Of course, they can have, from the Rubicon, they can have many, many questions about why, about themselves. Why isn't my family rich? John's family is rich. And if the family is religious, they may, they may, they may say, oh God made it like this, or they will take the stories that are given to them. But what's happening here now? The young person is now learning in school, physics, chemistry, biology, history, geography, geology, what we call the laws of nature and the laws of men, now, learning about government, learning about history. So the young person is making a transformation now, believing there is truth that has built the world. The world itself is full of truths, full of laws. Here, the parents are the law. Here, the school, maybe the police, adults are the law. Here, the young person begins to feel the world is law. The world is full of law, and I am a piece of that world. And my parents, 
and all the teachers, they are just pieces of that world, just like me. Now, in most of the world, the, this, these laws are material laws. I remember, I remember feeling liberated here when I, I loved materialism. You know, I told you I had a difficult time, especially with my father. And now I can tell him, everything you're telling me is just because of your genes. You don't even know these things. You're just an animal who's reacting. Ah, I felt so happy. Yeah. I felt free. Yeah. Until, <laughs> until more and more and more I studied. And by the time I was 20, I was very, very, very uh, lost. Because I thought, this doesn't actually make sense. This just means that I'm an animal or even I'm, an, I'm a robot. What am I? What, what, what is the human being? What is the world, really? Then I had real questions. But it, it was based on this freedom of truth and law being in the world. And I found spiritual science. In anthroposophy. And all of these laws I had learned, they weren't left behind. They were new interpretations for the same facts. Some of them are materialistic in the inorganic world, but I began to understand there are a new way to see life and soul and spirit itself. So whether the child here in the upper school, in the high school, has a materialistic foundation or a spiritual scientific foundation, it's the same facts that they need to meet. Yes? Now this, these facts all fit together. Whether they're materialistic or spiritual scientific, they all make one giant system, or what we call a world view. And the, this world view has to have a basis, has to have something out of which everything can be related. This whole materialistic science today is founded on subatomic particles, or electromagnetic forces. Yeah? Now, if you meet very educated, uh, people at university today who understand all of science and history and uh, anthropology and geology, they will tell you the basis for everything is electromagnetic radiation. Uh, this all had its beginning with the Big Bang. And from this, all the laws of gravity, of gases, of solids, of liquids, of chemistry, all the hierarchy of laws that make up this system of science generated from this one point. And that logic is called mathematics. But a really clever scientist says, yeah, but you have to give us one miracle, then we can build all of that. We have to have something come out of completely nothing. No time, no space, no existence, and then it all begins. But sp and spiritual science has the same thing. It also has a point from which everything comes. In the West, we call this the Logos. In China, they call it the Tao. In India, they call it the Brahma. There's an H in there. Now, also, especially in spiritual science, this system is completely logical, and it covers all the same facts. So you have two completely different systems, starting from completely polar opposite beginnings, also all explaining, trying to explain the same phenomenon. Yeah? Here, Newton says light is made out of, white light has all the colors in it. But Goethe says no, light has no colors in it. Color only happens when light meets darkness. And together, either the blue spectrum or the red spectrum come into being, depending on whether the darkness is stronger or the light is stronger. And both these views can be backed up by experimentation. You can do both experiments and be on the one side convinced that, that all the colors are in white light, and you do the other experiment, you see no. Color only comes about when light and dark meet. Now, there's a difference I have experienced between this view and this view. A very fundamental difference. This view claims that this view is total fiction, hallucination, absolute madness. 
This is only some kind of strange smoke that arises when electromagnetism in the brain produces imaginations of a god or a spirit, but none of that is real. The only thing that's real is the matter and its movement. So this view says that this view is, doesn't even exist. It's just madness. But this view doesn't negate this view. It understands that this view is a stage, a phase, in the development of intelligence. And this view says, this is the theory you come up with when you can only describe things with what the senses experience. So actually, in, from the spiritual scientific view, this view is a subset of the whole system. That means this view is what comes about from the 15th century yeah, to the 23rd century. This is a view that human beings developed. They had another view here, which was spiritual. And they will have another view in the future, which is spiritual. But it will include an understanding for the physical. Because <coughs> human beings, in their spiritual development, their spiritual development, have to become free from any compulsion from spirit itself. You might say a giant historic Rubicon that the human being, humanity has to go through. But this view says, if this doesn't develop, if out of this materialistic science, out of it, spiritual science doesn't develop, not return to ancient science, but out of this materialistic science, developing spiritual science, this will lead to destruction in this world. Not only destruction through bombs and ecological catastrophe, but destruction in the human soul through depression, through loss of enthusiasm, through madness. And just like this view has an essential beginning point and then works through the development of materialistic laws of gravity and gases and, and liquids, you know, this view says that out of the Tao, out of the Logos, logos come forth a hierarchy of spiritual beings who create new universes, who create the physical, who bring it life, who in, bring soul into it. And spiritual science calls this a hierarchy of beings, the archetypes, the archetypes out of which all creation come. Out of the Tao come the archetypes, just like out of the Big Bang come all the materialistic law. Out of the Tao come the, the hierarchy of archetypes, out of the Logos. I think I can't connect archetype with the, the spiritual being. So right. It just means... The spiritual beings. But the, the spiritual beings are archetypes of the created world. That means they can bring forth any forms of physical, any forms of life. Just like you can configure any of these forms with the different laws. So you could say the law of gravity is an archetypal law. All things are conformed to gravity. Whereas all things conform to these spiritual laws. But they have beings, yes. That's what's the word is, the problem is archetypes. Yeah, it's a word. Okay, let's get rid of archetypes and let's have beings. Yeah. It's not this word that I don't understand. It's the sentence that you say Spiritual beings are the archetypes. Yes. Are they archetypes? Yes. Good. <laughs> 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 well, I, gave, I give an example of the chair or of a plant. Uh, 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 but in my mind, a spiritual being and archetype, they're in two places and they're two different things. How are they each other? Why? Why? Okay, you have to change your view. <laughs> Tell me how. What? Okay, I'm going to show you an archetype. You can all have an experience of an archetype right now. Your eye. Your eye. Out of your eye comes everything you think, comes your whole destiny, comes everything you do. Out of your yes. own eye. Yeah, you can make these cameras. It comes out of the eye. Out of the eye 
understanding how to work with the world, and then creating. When you massage, are you in a dream? Are you asleep? It's coming out of your eye. It's not intellectual. It's direct activity out of your own eye. Now, imagine, we're not very powerful. But that, these things can't come forth out of the eye of the lion. The eye of the lion, all the lions come out. But only lions. The uh, lion can't create any more than lionness. But we are more evolved. We can bring forth other beings, just like the lion. Yeah? We can bring forth and help grow other human beings. But we can bring forth buildings and air conditioning and fans and cars and all of human culture, history, poetry. We can bring forth much more than the lion. But imagine there are beings who bring forth the eye of the lion, who bring forth our own eye. There are beings much more developed, much more powerful, that bring forth other archetypes. It's a living system, just like this system. These initial, in this system, these initial particles bring forth all that we have around us by accumulating together, by by associating together. But this is a dead picture of the same system. Only this system is, has beings at its foundation and not dead matter. Now, I didn't want to spend this much time with this. But I want you to see that young person shouldn't be, shouldn't be um, convinced of spiritual science or material science. The young person needs to learn all these facts. And that's why I say all of these archetypes. When I was giving you a picture of embryology, I was showing you and pulling from you your thinking. So you were experiencing your thinking the activities of the archetypes bringing forth the embryo. Bringing forth the embryo. If you weren't asleep and you were listening to me or you were listening to the translation, you were thinking. You were bringing forth pictures. Your eye was developing some kind of understanding. Whether you believed it or not, you were looking, trying to look at it logically as you put it forward out of yourself. You have to learn to do that when you all went to school. But most of us were taught with these so dead thoughts. As soon as we take an exam, we want to forget all those things as quick as possible. Because they don't teach us how to think. They teach us what to think. But if you teach young people how to think the same facts, then you give them a force, just like you were helping them with their life processes and their soul processes. You're giving them a powerful spiritual force in their thinking, in their understanding. I'm only teaching you these things as adults or putting them before you because your education didn't do it. But you are adults, and I'm an adult, so I can share with you all the thoughts of anthroposophy. Whether you believe it or not, I can share it with you because you're free, you're adults. But if I was teaching embryology in the high school, in your high school, I wouldn't teach it from, the, from and tell them about spiritual science. Or let's say, I would give them both views. I would let them decide. I would say, some people think this, other people think this. You can see with the same facts, I can see it this way or I can see it this way. But what I would do as a spiritual science is try to help them see what their own knowing process is like. How they think. How they bring, let them, I would show them self-observation of their own thinking, feeling, and willing processes. Without trying to explain it spiritually, but just through self-observation. Okay, so what I wanted to do in this session, do you understand a little bit more what we mean by archetypes? No? No, still not. <laughs> okay, what I wanted to do is review what we've done, and talk about what we're going to do in the next module. Okay, what I've been trying to do, from the point of view of spiritual science, trying to give you a picture of what I call the spiral of incarnations 
the cycle of life and the phases of existence. That's a big order. And I'm trying to bring what we've talked about over all the modules together. So if we have death here, and birth here, and here we have midlife, and here we have what Rudolf Steiner called the midnight hour, yeah? then what have we been looking at? I'm trying to give you a feeling for your whole existence, not just part of it. So rather than, than death, yeah, because death sounds so bad, I'll just call this dissolve. Yeah? I'll call this dissolve. There's a point here, some, which we call death, where the physical body starts to dissolve. Isn't that true? <coughs> dissolve. So I just put G-I-S, yeah? There's a point here, we've said this is three days. From here, the life body, astral body, and ego are going forward. And then here, only the astral body and the ego are going forward. Yeah? And now, here and now, the astral body is dissolved. <coughs> So if, if this whole thing is 90 years, then this is about 30 years. And then there's a whole process here, which we'll just call 250 years. We'll call this another 250 years to conception. Now remember what happens here in these first three days, in the dissolving of the life body, we see all of our memories. We have our life as one great picture in front of us of the last life, from here to here. But now, what do we experience here? We experience what other beings have experienced from us, of our last life, yeah? And then we're free from our, our so here the astral body dies. Now here we're free, the, the ego can continue further. Here we experience the ego as a little point inside us. What is our eye? What is our eye? Where is it? It's, it seems like a central thing. Yeah, here our physical body dissolves back into its environment. Here our life body dissolves back into the life world, the etheric world. Here our astral body dissolves back into the astral world. Another way to call dissolve, I could call expand. Yeah, if, when you, if, if you burn my body after I die, right away my physical body expands into the environment. But if you put it in the ground, it, all, it just happens slower. But it, it expands out into the realm from which it came. So here, the ego is no longer a point. It expands into this whole world of being. You know, when the mystic achieves this consciousness, he says, in Brahman, he says, I am the world. I am the world. So here, you are the world, and now you learn. So here you learn about your last life. Yeah? You learn from this hierarchy of beings, starting with the angels. The arch All these beings, you live in them, and you they, they speak to you about where you went right and where you went wrong, how you could, do, how you could make a new life on the basis of your last life. This is also an ascent. You're going through the world of the angels and the archangels and the archive. Also with your friends and family and people who are similar to you. You're going through this with humanity. Depending on how high you can go and be, stay conscious, expanded into this spiritual realm, you'll come to a point where you will have a spiritual yearning, Rochander says, to incarnate again, to try again with a new incarnation. Here, you have all, the eye has become an archetypal being, purely. And now, it has to, the most archetypal thing about you is your body. We all have a human body. So you have to begin to form the, the archetype of the body, because you're going to have to remake the body your parents give you. So that body has to be formed here, through your work, together with all these other beings. So not a new physical body, but the new archetype which will form the body and reform your new body, especially during the first seven years. You have to, coming through the stars, you have to 
gather the life forces around and form a new life body and a new astral body. And this is very important because here you will put your you will you will you will form your karma into your body. Now here you have to live the effects of your last life, of your karma, what you did, good and bad. And here you have to form that again out of to make to, to continue on. Where you've been bad to people, you have to be good to them. Where you've been good to them, you have to be better to them. That's very simplistic. Okay. And Rudolf Steiner says, oh, Super it's, it's very, I'm giving a very quick picture, okay? And Rudolf Sainz says, already here, with the help of the other beings, you're looking for your parents. Yeah? And so here at conception, your parents get together, and there we started to look at the egg and the sperm, and how they join together. And now all, all these forces are working together, because remember the eye is here. The eye is here, forming those, and the light body and the astral body. So the zygote begins to form, and we have the around it the yolk sac, and the amnion, and the placenta. And then this being here. So here we have the life, just more uh, the seed form, and then the life form, and then the animal form. And, then, and, the, and now we have the embryo. That means all of these bodies before birth are working in these, in these organic forms that they've formed around within which the embryo is developed. All right, and then we've been looking at this whole process here. Mirroring this, these have to dissolve. Now they have to come together and be formed, yeah? So here you have the birth of the life body. Here you have the birth of the physical body. Here the birth of the life body. Here's the birth of the astral body. And here, birth of the eye. You see how this whole thing here is connected. Yeah? So next module, we want to look at this whole process. This is your biography in health and illness. And here you will unfold your karma. So I want to give you lectures from, which I, because there are many, many lectures about this from Rudolf Steiner, a picture of how karma works in your adult life. And alongside this, we'll continue, we'll review again the physiology and anatomy in relationship to health and disease. And maybe, and I think this is time also the land we'll be talking about various diseases. Right? Yeah? So we get, a, we get a feeling for this whole, this whole cycle. And the cycle is always formed out of phases of development where forces in one phase metamorphose to help the forces coming in the next phase. But this cycle is part of a spiral because we never return to the same place. We're always, through cycle after cycle, moving forward until we the angels end. So there are two things very important here why we're bringing this to you in a massage course. Because you're dealing with clients, with people. You're working on with human beings. And from the moment you see that client or that uh, patient for the first time, you need to work on your own development to feel this patient is coming to me in a moment of karma, of destiny. And there are many, many things behind this patient that I could sense. So your patience. And two, this is very important for you. Doesn't it strike you as strange that you're always you? 
Have you ever thought about that? You're always you. You forget about yourself a lot, you're with other people. But many times, especially if you get older, you go, this whole life I've just been me. And this view that I was giving you of materialism, it's so strong today, it makes everyone feel, I'm just some, I'm just some molecules. I'm just some molecules. I pretend to be something more, but actually I'm just a few molecules. And soon I'm going to die. I'm 72, but I'll tell you, it just seemed yesterday I was 20. When I look in the mirror, I go, no. <laughs> no, no, no I'm, still, I'm still Jeff, I'm still 20, 30 maybe, 30. No, sometimes, yes, I feel that I'm going to die. Normally everybody goes, oh no, oh no, you die. Oh no. <laughs> I am the universe. <laughs> but I've watched my wife when she massages. And she goes into a different place. When she massages, she is really listening. She is really working with all of these forces. So is a great uh, violinist. And they're really playing perfectly. So life is difficult now. And you get disillusioned. And you're tired. And there's too much going on. And women have way too much going on. You know? But in those moments where you're working with your patients, at least try to live in, not intellectually in these ideas, but the inspiration that you are a cosmic being, and so is the person you're working on. I'm not asking you to believe this any more than the materialistic view. Talking about it like a practical exercise. Practice it and see. See the difference it makes on you and the difference it makes on your therapy. Okay, so next spring we'll try to compare this circle. You've just said it's very important, so I'm just going to say it. Okay, thank you.